Hey, it's Bill the Handyman up here in Northern California. How y'all doing today? Of course, today we're working on a Kenmore 100 series. And they say it does not work. Um, so, first thing we need to check is... Oh. They left me a pizza. Oh, sorry guys. I, I'm gluten free. Uh, but, uh... So we want to check this lid switch here, the door switch. Seems good. Want to check your barrel rotation. Seems okay. And so next we're going to take it apart and uh, look and see what's inside. Let's take this two screws off, flathead screwdriver in here, pry it up, pull it back, take a look inside. And so this video is for informational purposes. Uh, working on drives could be hazardous, so consult your local professional if in doubt. Okay, so you can see these little clips. You just have to uh, push in on them, and then that top will pop up. Well, you have to lift it up. And here's your disclaimer. Electrical shock hazard. And we got spider webs and a little spider in there. Come on, guys, let's get out of here. Let's get out of here now. There you go. Have a nice life. Oh, there's another one. Anyway, so we need to uh, take these screws out, and I I know that spider is not a potentially hazardous spider, so that's why I did that. Um, I have been bitten by spiders before, luckily nothing seriously poisonous, but you do have to be careful because if you get bit by a spider and you don't know what it is, um, it could get really bad. <clears throat> so. If you do get bit by one, you want to know what kind it is because then you can uh, do the whatever treatment accordingly. So this is kind of tricky here sometimes. You've got to kind of lift this up and twist this back so you can disconnect here uh, and get that door switch loose. And then you can pull that front door, uh, the front panel off. Okay, let's pull that front panel off, see what we got. I think, uh, what is that, a 5 8, five eight seven inch nut right there? I think, uh, what is that, a 5 8, five eight seven inch nut right there? Okay, got it off. Bingo! Jackpot! Oh, I got a, I got a tip today. Okay, let's see what we got here. Uh, yeah, so this is actually a bad sign for, uh, the owner. Oh, Kennedy, 72, hallelujah. That would be worth some. 72. And the rest of these are just... Now these are actually like zinc, I think. These ones here. This is a, a zinc penny, basically. It's copper coated. Um, so, and that's kind of why I save coins now. Because you notice the metal. You know, it just, it feels a lot different, you know. Just the feel of it. Um, so, uh, yeah, uh, we got more over here. Anyway, this is a bad sign because there's a 71, and, uh, I've been saving, uh, pretty much all the, all the pre-72 coins just because they're a hell of a lot different. Yeah, this, this one even feels lighter than this one. Yeah, it's... It's a little bit lighter, I think, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I could bite into this and bend it, man. This one here. These new ones. Anyway, this is a bad sign because that means that these coins have made it past the washer. Okay? That means that people don't clean out their pockets when they're doing their laundry. And if you don't clean out your pockets, then they could get stuck in the pump. Uh, screws and stuff can wreak havoc on the washing machines poke holes in the tubs etc so yeah uh i mean it's good business for me you know but I i'm into pre preventative maintenance so clean out your pockets and we can see this one blew the belt and that's probably all that's wrong with it uh, get a new dryer guys it don't work no more that's the way people think and we got more where that came from 
Yeah. So, probably about four dollars worth of coins in here, maybe. Plus this one, whatever that's worth. What does it say on it? Uh, God, we trust. Looks like a a T. Made in where? Who knows? Maybe it's a D. It's probably a D. So this thing probably just needs a belt, and we're good. And uh, of course, it's got the gum here, and you got to clean out the gum because otherwise you'll have gum on your white clothes, right? And then. <clears throat> Let's see, I wanted to give a, a shout out to Harbor Freight. Huh, because they have put me to work doing plumbing work before. So, these are the, whatever, the eight in one screwdrivers that they sell for like two or three bucks. They used to be like 99 cents at one point in history. And of course, everything's going up. So, if you pull this out, it's going to have the, the size nut that goes for this front door. You can use the Phillips to pull the t screws off the top there. And then you pull this out. Then you're going to have a smaller Phillips and flathead, which is not connected at this point. But it has the smaller uh, fitting for the back side. Uh, if you need to get this one or the back side, that will fit on there. So, yeah. Shout out to Harbor Freight. Uh, and uh, if you don't have one of these, uh, I, I really don't see how I don't see how a handyman could live without one of these myself. I mean, this comes in so handy that uh, I, I pretty much have several of them that I keep in various places. So yeah, um, so I got to pull this drum out clean all these coins out, clean the motor from dust, lube the, uh, lube the rollers, and uh, lube the idler with a little tri-flow, and then uh, put this puppy back together, get a, another belt for it. Okay, here's another shout out to Tura Lube, and basically this is like, basically it's military uh, oil kind of thing. Supposedly it will, it'll stick to the little, uh, wear areas in uh, moving parts like if you have anything like this it's got scratches in the bushing that will fill in the area supposedly and uh it's really good stuff it's recommended to me by a mechanic friend of mine and it's a good idea to shake the stuff up i think the newer he says the newer blend is uh not as full strength as the old school one was but yeah shake it up good what I usually do is I'll take a little bit of this I'll take a uh, this is actually a street sweeper blade which is pretty cool because it's tempered steel and you can uh, make various things out of it but anyway I'll take a take this in here and then drip a little on the on the rollers and maybe a little bit on the bushing in here maybe a little bit back there on that one all these moving parts and I got the Harbor Freight <clears throat> voltmeter, which is uh, pretty cool. I mean, for the price, you can't beat it. Yeah, really, you can't beat it anywhere. And uh, this one actually has a transistor checker in it. This is a uh, transistor checker here, which I've never used, but potentially uh, could be used. And look, they left me an Ernie Ball. Heavy duty. And what else? Oh, this is a EHX. And so I'll be playing tonight, guys. <clears throat> so anyway, back to the matter at hand. I'm just, I got a belt for it. And uh, I'm just in the process of uh, reassembling this. I'm going to do the dry check for the heat element here in a minute. Show you how to check the heat element and the uh, thermal cutoff with my uh, Harbor Freight meter. Okay, I found a wheat penny. This is a uh, that one cent wheat penny. Um, yeah, this is whatever. That's the capital penny. This is the wheat penny. Uh, these things could be worth some money, supposedly. Um, this one 
hard for me to read. What is it? 1941, looks like. Wow. Must have been a good year. So this one here, I was checking the motor. You hear that noise? You know, that, that's, that noise is basically stuff that's fallen inside the blower. And there's a couple ways to get this out. One is you can turn the dryer upside down and let it come out that chute. Or you can take the back off. What happens is you can see the lint trap is on the top of this. Like people put things on the top here and then all of a sudden it goes down the chute by accident when they're putting the filter back in or something. Gets in that chute down there, clogs up the motor, blower. Uh, yeah, that's very common. And I'll show you how to do that. Like, there's one way to uh, do it is you turn the dryer upside down and then uh, just kind of tap on it. And then it usually falls out the top again. Or you can take the back off and take that chute apart. And uh, I'll take that chute apart and show you how I do that. Okay, get your handy dandy uh, Harbor Freight tool out. You use the small fitting and you can take these off. <clears throat> and there's your warning again. Electrical shock hazard, disconnect power before servicing. Replace all panels and, and panels before operating. Uh, excuse me, replace all parts and panels before operating. Failure to do so can result in death or electrical shock. <clears throat> so, here's the chute that all the stuff usually gets thrown down and clogs up that blower. And this is how I take it off with one hand <clears throat> one hand that's the thermal fuse that usually blows when you have poor flow your dryer runs but doesn't heat you might want to check that also make sure that you've got 220 at the junction here and or coming out of your uh, socket you don't have full 220, the dryer may run but not heat. So this should pull off. If the top's lifted up, this will pull off easy. And we look inside here. Oh, look what we found. There's that pin they lost. Now there's a... What is it? A chunk of something in here. But, what? Toothpick. Oh, this is a stick pin. But, you get the idea. Yeah. This can cause problems. I've seen it bust the fins on these uh, screws and stuff. can bust the fins on these uh, blowers. And, uh, if a fin gets busted on it, it'll make a hell of a noise because it's out of balance. And it's like flapping around in there kind of thing. But yeah, try to clean this stuff out every once in a while. And then, I usually check this and I don't try this. If it's plugged in, you get zapped to, to heaven, right? Okay, where'd that meter go? We get our handy dandy Harbor Freight meter out. Turn it on, set it on to the ohm setting. Omega. And then we just check the continuity across here. I usually disconnect it uh, just to get it isolated. <coughs> so then we got another spider in there. Now that one, I'm not sure about. The, the aggressive spiders you definitely want to stay away from. Um, so this one is good. And if we check the heat element. We'll look down here we'll see that heat element is good and if we check up here on this one we'll see that that's good too so the only thing that was wrong with this was this belt let's watch this guy see if he attacks me mm. He's not that aggressive. A small black spider. And we got one over here. This is probably the mate. 
I'm gonna set him off on a different journey here. <clears throat> See if I can grab this one. Oh, come to Papa. This one's not cooperating. I'll let it leave it. It'll live in here for a while. Now this... <laughs> this is actually... Oh, this is part of... This is the, uh, the seal between the motor shaft and the housing on the other side of this. <clears throat> Somehow it never got put on right. Never got put on or never got put on right. Yeah, first time I've seen that. Didn't get put on right. And you can check that, make sure that that's all clear. No garbage up in here. No spiders up in here. And just put her back together, clean her up a little bit. Put her back together and she's good to go. Okay, so let's put this belt on. And another disclaimer for you guys. Um, it may look like this is pretty simple to do. And, you know, in theory, it sort of is. And, uh, you know, some people are probably looking at this and going, Oh, this, this old whatever. Dumb guy is, uh, you know, doing what anybody could do, right? So, I've been doing this probably uh, at least 20 years. So, I kind of know the ins and outs. And, uh, so... It can look easy, but thing is, is there go there's going to be some unforeseen variables that you probably, that I don't come across in this video, or you may come across. Um, so it's just a little disclaimer, um, and just to so that you don't get yourself in trouble. Don't think that I'm an idiot and I don't know what I'm doing, and I'm just trying to show off or whatever. Um, so, like I said, I've been doing this about 20 years, so, um, I may make, make it look easy. Uh, so, and this belt, so this belt, let's say this is the drum. That's the drum, it's wrapped around the drum, right? And then what it'll do is, it'll wrap through here. Uh, through that pulley and up around that motor so what you have to do is you'll have to put tension on this pulley in order to get it on that motor and then it just that's basically the way it sits and just pretend the barrels right there and then to take it off basically I usually just take my finger and go under here and pull it off like this yeah that's how it works guys if you need any help you can contact me I give phone advice $39 707-443-8347 you also send me an email at basstech72588 at gmail. Boy, Adam, Sam, and then tech, like technician, 72588 at gmail. And uh, I also uh, have a how to make money in a plants repair course. I take two students per year. And you can contact me and ask me about that as well if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Thank you for your support and reuse and recycling.